subjects in work, for example, can you talk in work about people, God's existence or religion? They tell you don't talk about religion or politics, right? So, yeah, I'm saying in this country, these, or, or in general, even if you're on the train, you start talking about that, people will give you very strange looks. So these kind of videos, I would say they, they give the people the motive and the in, incentive to, to uh, have this kind of confidence of engaging in these kind of discussions right, that they're right, fine, that there's right. nothing taboo about them, you know? So you said to me you don't believe in a creator, right? right. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, come on, man. You, the you know, <laughs> what is the question I'm going to ask? Tell me, tell me. Play. The question is... Yes. Everything has a beginning. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. Okay, I'll say, okay. Tell no. me, tell me what I was going to say. I want to know you. Okay. How, what do you come across usually? Everything has a beginning, okay. so the world must have a beginning. That's a Kalam cosmological argument. Mm -hmm. Everything that begins to exist requires a cause. The universe began to exist before the universe. I don't remember in my life using the argument. Okay. Maybe one time I, some, somewhere I did say something, but yeah. I don't think I used the argument the way it is here in the park. Right. I don't think so. All right. I'm happy to hear your question. No problem. Okay. So I was, I was going to say really, yeah. not that everything has a beginning. Right. I, I was going to say that can something come from nothing? Question as well. uh, I would say no. No. Yes. Do you agree that the universe as itself is like it's composed of different physical things? Like for example, the universe is stars and galaxies, etc. It's composed of different things. Yeah, physical things, physical, yes. physical pro yes. properties. So if we say that the universe, everything within the universe also has a starting point. Uh, depends. The what objects in the universe. Everything? Like the stars, the planets, the trees, the human beings, the objects, everything that we can observe. Do we, do we, do we know of anything eternal? I mean, I'm not a scientist. Yes. But, um, I mean, for example, like, okay, the tree came into existence, fine. But, um, for example, you, you, that doesn't mean that, like, all particles were created. But, right? but I, would say, like, I, I think this is a bit of a, sometimes what people do. I, I believe it's a bit fallacious to reason that way. Like, I, I'm not saying you're reasoning that way, but I say I think uh, it's a fallacious reasoning to ignore the, the macro level that represents the micro level and think about the micro level. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? So what people say, they look at the particles and then they start talking about whether the particles themselves are eternal or not. But the reality, all of these particles represent something in reality on the macro level. Like the particles will represent a star on a macro level, for example. Okay. Or will re represent a tree, right. or me, or you. Okay. So I'm saying looking at the macro level, which is a representation of that micro level that you want to talk about right now, is anything on the macro level infinite, which is the representation of... On the macro level. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, I don't think it's like... Anything that we know of. Depends. Like, is air a macro level, or like, is oxygen on macro level? You, you macro can level? you can use the gases as well in the universe because, according gases. to scientists, they have a start as a starting point. Is it? Yeah. Okay. With the Big Bang. Obviously. So, so is your definition of a macro level everything? Like, is it necessary to have a starting point in order to be on the macro level? I'm saying anything on the macro level has a starting point. That's the claim I'm making, basically. Okay, let's agree with that and see where yeah, it goes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what I was trying to say is this. We said that everything, nothing can come from nothing. Right? You can have something that comes from nothing. Yeah. So basically, if you have nothingness, absolute nothingness, it will always remain absolute nothingness. If we're looking at the universe around us, when the people ask the question of whether the universe is eternal or not, right? what I would usually say is, what do you mean by the universe? When we say the universe, we mean the stars, the galaxies. That's what I was talking about, the macro level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if these things all have a starting point, then it's very irrational to say that the universe itself does not have a starting point. Why? Because everything that makes the universe what it is has a starting point. What we call the universe is the parts in the universe. But the, as, maybe I'm still not getting the micro, macro point. So mm. you consist of a lot of... Uh, I'm a macro level. A human being is a right, macro, on a macro right. level, and for you example. consists of a lot of micro level particles. Yes. So you would say that. Yes. Okay. And like, I mean, you can organize these, these, these who, who? micro levels in a, in a lot who? of uh, Who organizes? Of ways. I mean, what organizes? Well, they can be organized. Yes. By what? In various, well, by well, whatever. I could kick you and they're organized in a different way, right? Excellent. So what made the universe organized in the way it is? 
Because the universe, okay, <laughs> because the universe is organized in a way. I was bringing you there, but you brought me there, which is excellent, you know. So the universe is, is arranged in a specific way. You see, if you look at the macro level, everything makes sense, because the universe is arranged in a specific manner, it's arranged in a specific way, and it is it allows life to exist. And it could have been arranged in many different ways. Like we Muslims believe that Allah says in the Quran that He plays the stars as lamps for us. Do you get the point? He created the sun and the moon to orbit. So we say that the Creator is the one who put these things in the positions that they are, okay. right? And what we say is the creator, we say that the thing that brought the universe into existence, okay. brought the particles into existence, okay. brought everything into existence okay. as a starting point. What do you think about that kind of reasoning? So, okay, so I can agree that the world could be organized or the universe could be organized in a lot of different ways, right? So now, convince me that it is a creator, you know? It could be organized by sure. so many different No problem, well I usually say, and, and I would I would say this because to make it as a disclaimer, yes. I do not come to convince, right? But I, I believe anyone sincere, when you use reasoning with them, they will understand that this is very fair, fair, basic. Fair. Do you get the point of what I'm trying to say? Okay, I'm saying now, can me or you create a universe? Uh, no, no, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I can't create, I mean... Actual universe, this one that we're talking about. And this is out of not, out of not. Or what do you mean? Uh, any way, shape, or form, can we create a universe? Do you know uh, you what, know how vast the universe is, isn't it? Sorry? What am I, what, what Anything you want. Can you create a universe as vast as the one that we have? No. So why are we not able to create a universe? I mean, it's not logically impossible, but empirically... I think unlikely. it is logically impossible. Logically impossible, why? Because we are limited to the universe that we are, we are within. We cannot create something that is, has the same Out amount of space. Of do, you get the, do you get the point? Uh -huh. So I would say it's not even possible. But I would say, why cannot, cannot we even create a, a, a universe, mm. even if we can create it outside of this one, we still can't, or we can. Wait. Me and you. Ask the question again. I'm saying if we want to create a universe, mm. and that universe will be outside, which we're saying is not possible, well, let's say uh, hypothetically it is. Uh, Why me and you, just you and me, without any help? Can we do that? Logically. Yes. Without any help, me and you. Without any help. Yes. No, of course not. I'll take I'll talk for myself. No. No. What materials do you mean? Can you can you create a sun? Uh, logically, if I have the materials, the sun is composed of yes. And then put that sun within a specific. And by the way, do you know planet Earth? If you place it within the sun, how many pla planets Earth do you need to fill one sun? Our small solar sun. How many? Like a million. One point three million. Okay. Now, do you see how small you are? So let's say you want to create a small star, the one that is a, yeah. not the supernova, which exists right, in, the, right, in the universe, right. which is billions of time. How are you going to do that? It doesn't matter how many materials do you have. If I have all the materials of the sun, or I mean, if I have the technology, I could logically do which, it. Which technology? How are you going to do it? Tell me, walk me through. Uh, okay. uh, supernova, you want to create a supernova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you going to do it? I take, a, I take a lot of particles, I put them together, they a lot of energy. But we, cannot, we, cannot, we, cannot, <laughs> we cannot take particles, isn't it? So They're very small, you cannot you do say, that. Would you say you could... Uh, create a very small sun of this size. With you, if, depends on how, if you define sun by something flaming, flammable, etc. You can probably do something oh, yes. very small like this. But I'm saying something of the vast yeah. universe is not only that. So the, the star is not only within the universe. Right. It is in a specific place, right. and there is uh, planets around. There is okay. a specific orbit okay. that it's, it's okay. running in. Okay. You see, when I say universe, okay. for every okay. galaxy, stars, zillions of stars, so zillions. Let me, ask, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yes. Could you create a Tiny, tiny. Universe. I personally don't think so. Why not? Because it's very complex. It's complex, but um, do you know zillions. What zillions is? No. But zillions is just a, a, an exaggeration of, of billions. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to multiply billions together, right. together, right? So we're saying there's zillions of stars in our galaxy. There's zillions of galaxies, uh, yeah. and in each galaxy there is zillions of stars. Uh, yeah. So in order for you to compose these, you right, will not right. be able to compose them and make. Sure. Even if you make a mini universe, you can't. But, Let alone a, ma but, um, a macro. One. So let's, let's let's take a very 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 small, very very not complex you universe. Can't. universe okay? You can't. So even one where there's just a sun, one planet, you can't create. Sun and one planet. Yeah. Uh, if you, but what you mean by a planet is going to be a small rock. It's not going to be a planet. Okay, but you so see where that's why that's okay. why that's why I'm trying to say to. I know you're saying that if you can do it very but small, you, you can do it very big, that, but yeah. it doesn't work that way. I'll Logically tell you why. No, it doesn't. Okay, why? Because if we come a little bit closer to the sun, all of us are going to burn. Mm. You cannot be in anywhere near the sun to begin with. But that could be in a fantastic uh, spaceship. But that thing will burn as well, coming close to the sun. Well, but if it, if, if it is... It will burn, it doesn't matter how strong it is. So that's an empirical point. But, uh, yes, but so you know and this is a very small point. star. 
you're not making a logical point, you're making an empirical point. It's fast empirical, it's impossible to create the universe because we have to get close to the sun and we burn. No, I'm making the logical point, this logical point, is that we are limited and our limitations are, not, are never going to allow us to be able to create something that are outside of these limitations. This is the logical point that I'm trying to make. So I'm saying human beings are limited. Okay. And I think this is a, very, a big, big problem now that we need to discuss is sure. in the West, they have this kind of idea that they try to instill in the minds of the people is that you can do anything. And this is just a fairy tale, right? Science will never allow us to do everything that we want to do. Do you get the point of view? We have limitations as human beings and we will always be limited. Just like your eyesight is limited, you cannot see behind these trees and, and your hearing is limited, you cannot hear there. Our minds that we also use are also limited. Do you get the okay. point of view? Okay. And I don't think we're going to live long enough anyways because the universe is coming to, a, to an end if you look at how the universe is going, going anyways. But leaving that outside, outside of, of our discussion. Coming back to where we were. I'm saying if you and me cannot create a universe, yeah. without, uh, uh, let's say even from nothing, let's use because I didn't say from nothing, but let's say from nothing. If yeah. you and me cannot create the universe from nothing. I don't nothing, agree, but okay. Do you, from nothing? From nothing, fine. Yeah, okay. So but, you agree there, right? From nothing, okay. Yes, from nothing. But the universe that we have today has to come from nothing. Why? Why can it not be Because it's not forever. Why can it not be there eternally? Sorry? Why can it not be there eternally? The argument that I started with. Which was? Is that when we say the universe, it is the micro, micro thing within the universe. When I say universe, I mean galaxies, stars, space, I mean uh, these trees, yeah. I mean human beings. And all of these things have a starting point. Therefore, when I say the universe, yeah. what do you mean? But why, not, why do you not talk about the micro stuff? No, so, I'm saying when you say the universe, yeah. what do you mean? You oh. mean these objects that we talk about, which all have a beginning, therefore they're not eternal. That's a good point. What do I mean? Um, let's say a part, uh, let's say material. What, what does matter represent? Huh? What does matter represent? Because the matter does not exist by itself uh, like this. Like matter has to represent a micro something. Okay. Do, do you agree with me? A micro or a macro? A macro something. A macro. So, matter has to represent something. Uh -huh, so it's a building block for something in reality. So what, so, they can't, so what about just one piece of matter? One piece of matter is already matter? within something. Can you give me one isolated piece of matter from an exist, existence? It's, it can't happen. Okay, but do, you get, do you see, it's separating both yeah. is what, where people come to this issue. But if you think about it rationally, matter is, doesn't exist by itself. It has to represent something on a macro level. If it is representing something on a macro level, okay. looking at that something on a macro level, which is the matter, it has a starting point. So the macro level thing. Yes exists okay so it's composed of matter yes right everything is composed of matter right. but, but there is no isolated existence that is called matter by itself it has to represent something within reality i'm not convinced but can you show me isolated matter separate from any uh, existence i mean no but i can still uh, like i can still refer to it as an isolated you can thing. refer to it yeah. but it is like me referring to a piece of your skin yeah why, what's so wrong about that no, there is nothing wrong okay. about that, but a piece of your skin is, is you, is what makes you. Uh, you, you are pieces of skin in, in reality, yeah. so that, that is what makes a human being. So me referring to a part of you and ignoring the reality that this is just making a holistic big thing, yeah. then you're, looking, you're, leaving, you're leaving the box and you're looking inside the box, you get the point? So the reality is looking at the, at the micro level, everything in existence has a starting point, on a macro level. On the macro level. And everything in existence is composed of matters. I agree that on the macro level, everything yes. has a starting point. And this ma Not this logically, but yes. Uh, empirically. Yes. And I don't agree that that we can't just neglect the, the micro level question by saying it has to represent No, I said even if you neglect it, okay. it, this matter has to be, as you said to me, yeah. uh, uh, arranged in a specific manner. And that will require... Remember what, when we said the matter is arranged in a specific manner to make a it planet is. or make a star? Yes. But My question is, that would require by necessity something outside of the universe to arrange the universe the way it is. That does not follow. Why? Why, why does that follow? So how, uh, what is the explanation for, for them uh, being arranged the way that they are? The way that they allow life to exist, the way that they are very complex systems, the, the way that they... Why? Do you know, let me tell you something, some, some of the Quranic verses, uh, yes. what the Quran says. The Quran says Allah sends rains from the sky, rain from the sky. The rain drops at the plants. The same water comes from the sky, right? Not different water. Wherever you are, is the same water coming. Yeah, yeah. These trees are growing, different trees are growing, right. different leaves are coming. Right. 
different flowers are coming in right. different in different shapes, different right. colors, right. different right. different fruits are coming. Right. These different fruits are all different. Within these different fruits, there's different nutritional values, right? right? right. You know, in, in Spain, in some parts, there is olives, right? There is 500 types of olives, and they all look the same. Quran says, "Mujtabihan wa ghayra mutashabihan." They look the same, but they're not the same. They have different nutritional values. They produce different oils, right? Okay. They are helpful for specific people, are not helpful for other people, good, good. right? So we, I'm saying the way that the universe it is, the universe, the, the, the way it is today, it helps us to live. Help us, this tree yeah. gives you oxygen, takes your carbon dioxide. Yeah. Does that help you to function? I would say so. Yeah, absolutely. This ozone sphere is 0 0.004 carbon dioxide. Yeah. If this tree is not there, it would be living in a, fl a flammable ball of fire. If the, the, the sun was closer, it would burn. If it was further away, it would freeze. The way that planet Earth is fine-tuned, the argument that, that, that they usually use, which is called the teleological right. argument, shows you that there has to be an intent behind the way it is. Why does it show me that there has to be an intent? Because if you leave things by themselves, they tend to become chaotic. They don't, orga they don't get organized. When you leave your room for 100 years, it doesn't become the Museum of, uh, of London, you know? So, so, so let's... Yes. Uh, I want to talk about this, uh, all like this organization aspect and this chaotic and this um, complexity aspect. Yeah, but do you agree with me also? Yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. Good, sorry, sorry. No, I want you. No, 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 no. I want you to finish. Sorry. Go ahead. So um, you say we live in a sort of like perfectly uh, complex, organized system. Yes. But um, to allow us to live, yes. Right. So if you look at an economic system, for example, right. So let's go back 100 years, right? And I'm not sure, and there are different ways of measuring economic success, right? But you might say uh, the UK had the best economic, or like was the most affluent. People here were very affluent and it was, it was really, it, it was great. Hypothetically, right? you mean? Hypothetically. Yes. I don't care what it is. No still. problem, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Hypothetically, let's say that. Um, nowadays, we would say that was a that was a devastating state because um, nowadays, in let's just compare the UK with the UK back then. The UK nowadays is much better off than the UK 100 years ago. Basically, depends on what you mean by better. Yeah, yeah, they're absolutely. Do you agree with me? Because someone, yeah. uh, I say, wouldn't people? Many people would say yeah. that they would live a far better life in the past than they do today. I'm one of these people. Uh, Even in the UK. Okay. Away from, I believe, technology, because people yeah. view technology just as a positive thing. No. Reality, technology is not just a positive thing. Okay. If you look how it influences our life as human beings, okay. there is so many bad influences. Do you get the point? I so I would say living a very simple life 100 years ago, to me as an individual, yeah. would be a more happier or fruitful life than it is today. Might be, might be. Yes. I even buy that. Fine, fine, fine. I give you that, all of that. Basically, my point is, mm. you're looking at this mm. and you think it is complex and it's organized well. But it could be organized much better, it could be organized much worse. After sometimes things just are as they are. No, 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 and, no, no. And there's a difference and, there. And, and, and say mm. the That's not true. Okay. Because I'm saying they're organized to allow life to exist. And if any of the variables within okay. the universe are changed just by one number, right. there are many books written on that in, in, uh, in uh, physics, right? It's just a simple the speed of the universe expanding, the way that the planets are positioned, all of these stuff, right? Uh -huh. Uh, the gravitational constants, when right. the, the atoms started to form, all, all of this, right? No, no, no. If they're just changed by a number from like an infinite amount of numbers, if just one number changes, there will not be life. So it is not as, as, you're, as you're putting it, it's very different. So you cannot arrange it in a different way that allows life to exist, basically. Ah, okay, okay. Do you get the point? Because you're saying you can, allow, you can arrange it in a better way. I'm saying no. Right. Any other way will not allow you to be the way you are. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're not allow life to exist. We're not allow human beings to exist. We're not allow this, this beautiful planet that we live on to exist. No. So you think this is the best, this most perfect? What do you, I think the universe today, yeah. uh, the way it's created is in the best way, the best way it can possibly be. And I think planet Earth, it is as well, but we are ruining it. And you can see that already. I don't need to tell you about like how we're ruining, ruining the planet. Yeah? I mean, we don't need to start a discussion on that. I'm sure you agree with that already, you know? So. What I'm saying is the following, yeah? Uh, yeah. The universe itself is, is self-evident of, of 
a maker that makes it the, the way it is. You have not argued for that. You have only argued that it is suitable for us. I'm sure. Yes, yes. Why does yes. that? Why does that? Not only suitable great? for us. Suitable for us has a measurement of beauty. Like for example, the 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 what we call the the fine tuning argument, right? Some parts of the fine tuning argument is about beauty. Looking at the when a sunset is looking just like the clouds there, looking at the trees. This beauty as well shows that there is a wise designer behind it. As I said to you, the, the, when you tend to leave something, it becomes chaotic. It does not become organized. It does not become beautiful. It does not become a complex system. It does not start allowing life to exist. God that they say there is something that uh, creates all this stuff. Yes, there are, there are scientists who believe. There are scientists who believe, yeah? So, but coming back to this point, yeah? So this, uh, what I'm saying is the following, right? Looking at the universe, I do not think it would be in any way, shape, or form, rational. No, no. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Rational to say that there is nothing that brought all of this into existence, organized it the way, the way, the way it is. Looking also as a, at the macro level, as I said to you, that everything has a starting point, right. which you can infer from that logically that the universe also should have a starting point because the parts of the universe, all of them, have a starting point. They are restricted, and they require something outside of themselves yeah. to restrict in the way that they are restricted. Yeah. But I'll tell you something interesting now. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me now let me go somewhere else now, yeah? Yeah. Adding on top of all of that. Yeah. I don't believe that the case because you said to me convince me of the existence of God. I believe that the person who does not believe in God is the one who should represent a case for why he doesn't believe in God and not the opposite way around. Why? Why? As I said first, the argument I was just making, because yeah. I believe it's self evident already. Yeah. Number two what I'm going to add to that is what we call the fitra, is an innate disposition that human beings are born with. Every human being is born believing in a higher power, has specific attributes. Okay. There are studies on that. Oxford University conducted a study, 57 academics. <laughs> are you sure? And we have books and we have every civilization yeah, yeah, yeah. exists throughout history. Okay. So I'm saying that's a part of the human nature and human existence. It's a universal belief. And we do not born with any other universal beliefs that are true. So every, all, sorry, all other universal beliefs, let me rephrase that because this, I didn't say it correctly. Every other universal belief that we're born with is also true. Like we're born with a universal belief that we exist. And that belief is true. We're born with a universal belief of causality. If you touch a baby, the baby will look behind him. They actually conducted the experiments where there is a table and they held the objects and they removed the table and the objects didn't fall and the baby was reacting shocked. You get the point? Because the baby is expecting things to fall and make an impact. Okay. So we are born with this kind of idea, inherent idea of causality as well. So these universal beliefs that are far across every human being, being born with without any external influence on them, are all true. So what about um, death? So a baby does not understand that, right? Like, so the baby might have a belief. No, I'm saying the beliefs that we're born yeah, universally yeah. with, yeah, yeah. that we're born right, universally right, with, are all true. Right, right. But, but the baby might believe there's nothing like that. He doesn't understand, but that's not true. So the baby is agnostic on that. He does not believe it or not believe it, which okay. it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not an active claim. Do you right. get the point? Right. So we cannot make it an active claim because it's not. The baby is not realizing. So it is not a, it's not a, a knowledge. It's, it's not saying yes or no. Okay. It's just that I don't know. Do you get the point? It's an agnostic position. The, yeah. The, yeah. I'm saying the I things that are affirmative. Do you get the point? Line. But I guess it is difficult to draw the line when a belief of a, of a, of a baby becomes affirmative and becomes something... No, if, if there is evidence that it is affirmative, like as I said, the, the studies that are conducted for the, the existence of the Creator, studies that are conducted for causality, and us existing, us behaving by itself, are evidence that we believe that we are in this reality where we exist. And all of these beliefs are true. And there is no other universal beliefs that we're inherently born with that are not true. Okay. So that's the second argument on top of the idea that I already believe it is self-evident, you know? Okay, and I can okay. add more arguments, but, but I think, look, I think this is this is more than enough for someone who is, as I said to you, sincere. Us being born the way we are, realizing that there must be a higher power that created this world above us, right? This is what the babies are born with in the studies. Higher power above us. They don't believe it's Jesus. They don't believe it's uh, Brahma. They don't believe it at all. They believe it's something great and above, right? And this is the Islamic belief. We don't believe God is a man. We don't believe God is a human being. We don't believe Allah resembles as a creation. So for example, you know colors. If I tell you to think about a color, that new color that you've never experienced. Can you do that? Sorry? Can you color. think of a new color that you never experienced in your life? 
no. No. So we say Allah is something that you also cannot think about because you've never experienced. So that what, how Allah is or what Allah is, something that is beyond our comprehension. But we can understand some of the attributes by looking at the universe like I was telling you. And then for the rest of the attributes, you need revelation. So Allah sends prophets and messengers like Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Adam, etc. You heard about these prophets and messengers, right? And these prophets and messengers bring the message of truth, bring a scripture, and they bring evidences as well to show that they're coming from the divine. So they don't ju just come to you and they say, look, I'm, I'm a prophet, come follow me, let's go over there. No. They bring evidences to show that they are coming from a supernatural being, a creator, something that created the world. Okay, uh, I have a couple of points. Okay, go ahead. Um, first, uh, I, I want to go back. Yeah, let's go back. Sorry, but, uh, <laughs> That's okay. So, that is mean, okay. so you say matter is organized in a specific way, right? But I mean, matter must be organized in some way. Like, you yes. know, it is, could be this way, it could be this no way. No problem. And like that it is this specific way, although it is infinitely unlikely, tells nothing about that it is supernatural, that it is but, this but, way. But you've just argued against yourself. How? So you're saying it's infinitely unlikely that there is nothing that organizes it the way it is. Because it's so... No, 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 no. I said it is infinitely unlikely that yes. it is organized the way it is. It is infinitely unlikely that yeah. it is organized, which which means what? So, say for example. No, no, but I want to think. Okay, I want okay. you to uh, think about the statement care carefully. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is infinitely unlikely like, yeah. that the universe is organized the way it is. Yes. Which shows what? It shows that nothing. There has to be. No, no, no. no, no okay, okay, <laughs> How okay. is that? That shows nothing. Okay, okay, go ahead. Let me show you. Yes. You can walk over there. Think about the statement again. You, you can okay. walk over there. Yes. Uh, Ten meters, and I tell you, stop at any point. No, you're saying that you're stopping at point eight, point five. I know, point I know the argument you're trying to make. By the way, but it doesn't mean that it's no, supernatural. No, I know the argument that you're okay, trying to make. I, I understand the argument that you're trying to make, but I'm saying because there is infinite other possibilities, yeah. that what makes this possibility significant. No, that, of course it does. No, it is. It is just that you are at it eight point five. Zero meters is, is, is not significant. How? How? Without it's without right. any external ex external. It has to be one way. No, no. But still, coming back to the the point that I made before it, this was not only my argument. My argument was that something cannot come from nothing. So in order for something to be organized in a specific manner to begin with, yeah. it has to be in existence first. So I, if I want to organize few yeah. bags, they have, it has to be few bags first. Yes. Right. So there has to be first this universe that I say I was saying to you on a macro level, it all has a beginning, it has a starting point. Yeah. So my argument is, okay. is linked. You get the point. My argument is not just one piece. I'm linking the argument two pieces together. So you're the idea that, that it has a starting point, mm -hmm. so it cannot come from nothing. And because it comes from a specific place and it is organized the way it is, wherever that place from that it comes from is, the, that, uh, is what it made it the way it is. You understand this? Let me repeat it again. I'm saying the universe is arranged in a specific way yes, and, and it has a starting point. Has, something has to bring it into existence. If something has to bring it into existence, then it also brought it into existence the way it is today. And if the, if the way it is today that it allows life to exist, it is beautiful, then there is an intent behind that for us, for us to understand, for us to exist and for us to look at the beauty. Okay. So let me try to understand you correctly. Yes. So you're saying the universe has a starting point? When I say the universe, as I said, the universe is that which within the universe. So yes, the universe has a starting point. So the macro level universe. Yes, yes. As I said, this is what we mean by the, yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yes. Which I'm still not convinced. Sorry. But which I'm still not convinced. No problem. But I think it's an interesting argument. No problem. But um, so this macro level universe has a starting point. Hence, something must have created it. Hence, this is also what's creating what is right now. That. Right now. No, 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 no. I'm saying. The universe has a starting point. Because yeah. the universe has a starting point, there has to be something that started the universe. Because yeah, yeah. we said we cannot have something from nothing, correct? Right? And if there has to be something that brought the universe into existence, then it makes logical sense that it brought it into existence the way it is. Because it brought it into existence. You walking over there 8.5 or 10 meters, there's nothing behind that. But we make an, over there, I'm not bringing anything into existence. I'm saying you if you create up. something, you bring it into create, bring it to existence, it's create. Whatever created the universe, to use it that way, created the universe the way it is. So if the universe is in a way that allows life to exist and it is beautiful, it shows the attributes of whoever created it. You understand? Like if I'm stupid and I create something, I will create something that is not good or functional. I show the attributes of me as a limitation as a human. 
if the universe represents perfect attributes or what I call perfect attributes, therefore it shows that whatever created it also has these perfect attributes that he put in the universe. Okay, so... You understand this? Doesn't make sense. There's perfect attributes here, so the one who's creating it must also have these perfect... Must, yes, put these perfect attributes And also these attributes in imperfect existence. attitudes? Because there's a lot of imperfection as well in the world? We believe, or we say as Muslims, that this entity is the only perfect entity. Okay. And it's created us for a purpose. Yes. And this purpose is a test. This life is a test. Okay. Therefore, you're not, you're not meant to be perfect here. Uh -huh. You're meant to be tested here. So therefore, it is perfect that you're not perfect because that's the intent of the Creator. And that seems to be like an easy way out, right? <laughs> no. really I, I, would, I wouldn't say so because sure. if you look at the uh, other things in the universe, yeah. they are perfect in the way that they are. But we as human beings, which we are allowed to live, yeah. we have something unique about us, which shows that there is something, there's an intent behind us that differentiates us from everything else. Because the universe by itself allows our existence. Yeah. Yes. And when you see that we have things different about us, that makes logical sense. There's no problem with that. Because you, we're unique within the universe anyways. Like a bird. Sorry? Like a bird. What do you mean like a bird? A bird is unique. Yeah, you can, you can say the bird is unique, no problem. Is the issue? No, no, maybe there's no issue. <laughs> anyways, let's come, come just okay, coming back okay, to where yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you still want to say anything on this point? No, no, no. no okay, no, coming no. back to where we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combining what I said together, yeah, yeah, yeah. the idea that you're born... How do you, do you explain this idea that we're born with a, with a creator universally? Uh, how do I explain what? The idea that everyone is born yeah. believing in a, in a creator, a higher power that has specific uh -huh. attributes. How do I explain it? Um, and every, that every universal positive claim that we believe in is also true. How do you explain that? So do you agree that yeah. it, it shows that there has to be something that instilled that within human beings? Okay, so... Because it is there. It, 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 that, that sounds weird, because like a one-year-old, how can they think of a... How do you even assess that they have... Think in a superpower. Uh, if you look at the study, I don't believe it was on one year old. Yeah. It was on uh, three to something, I believe, three to six, three to five. And these are from every country around the world, including atheistic countries that have no religion. For example, yeah. China, from Japan, which means their parents will not teach them about religion, will not teach them about God, yeah. etc. So they, so, so they not have an external influence from the parents that, that is given it to them. But and they're very young. But hmm. at this age, five, six. There could be claims that every child has that are wrong. Not five, six. We're saying, I think, believe from three all the way to five or six. You can go back to the studies on Oxford. It's published on Oxford University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you Google it around, it'll come up. I don't have a phone, but what is it called? Do you know? It's just if you just, say, if you just say uh, uh, Oxford University study, yeah. Yeah. inherent belief in God or innate belief in God, it will come up straight away. It's a very popular study. Okay. Yeah. Let's say it's true. It is true because I can okay. show you now on the phone if you like. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. okay, but saying what you're going to say, yes. Continue what you're saying. I don't know, I have to think about it. But, uh, yeah, think about it. I mean, it. think about evolution, evolutionary theories or what is useful, what is blah, blah, blah. I mean, so university. Also, if you look at it like, I mean, I mean, just like every culture used to have a religion, right? Like the, the atheist cultures are not really that common, right? So I guess I'm saying point. every. That's a, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying no, to say. I mean, that's that's like, more. I'm saying that's more evidence. Yeah, but I, I think mm. that is actually weakening your. Why? Your, your point, because you're saying okay, Islam, mm. and uh, and you're saying Abrahamic religion, so you believe in that tradition, but. Um, the fact that everyone is just born with this disposition might also... I'm not saying Abrahamic religion. Sorry? I'm not saying Abrahamic religion. Is Islam not an Abrahamic religion? It is, but, uh, uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm, not saying, saying, I'm not saying that they're born with a belief in an Abrahamic religion, like, you know? If, if, if I am born I'm with a certain... I'm clarifying just to what I'm saying. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So no, I'm... No, I'm no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like this... Hmm. Like this might be the explanation why people believe in a religion. And, and, and this might be... No, but leaving religion on the side because I've not argued for religion okay, yet. Or, or religion has evidences. Okay, okay. I can bring you evidences for Islam, uh -huh. but that's separate. Good. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about God's existence, yes. isn't it? So it's yes. a separate matter. Yes. Okay. Oxford, Oxford. Student. Dot com. God is a part of human nature. Then it talks about the study. It talks about who conducted the study. Dr. Justin Barrett is the one who conducted the study. Justin Barrett. 50 academics. And you can read if you want to read this online. It's available. Okay. Okay. Want to read? Uh, okay, no, I, I read it, but okay, okay, I read it. Fine, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm saying it's true, so I'm not making it up basically. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. this universal belief 
I would say puts the weight on the atheist, not, not on the believer. Because, because if it's a part of my existence, by the way, you study philosophy, you said. You know what epistemology is, correct? Sure. Okay. The, the, the strongest uh, uh, forms of knowledge is the intuitive knowledge. Because everything is based on the intu intuitive knowledge. You cannot reason without first assuming your own existence, existence of the world around you. Okay. You cannot do anything without first having first principles of intuitive knowledge, Good. which makes it the strongest form of knowledge. Yes. So, it, so if it's an intuitive knowledge to believe in God's existence, this is the, more, the strongest uh, form of knowledge. Yes, you know, it makes it the most strong, as in like yes. the most powerful in us, uh, in, in, in enable us. Um, in it doesn't make it the most true knowledge. That's, that's what I'm not saying. Yeah. It doesn't make it the most true. I'm knowledge. not saying true. I'm saying okay. the strongest form of knowledge. But when, why does it matter if you if you if you, if you don't mean true? Be because us? we are now having a rational discussion. Right. So through a rational discussion, we have different types of arguments, and so, some are stronger, some are weaker. So if I'm arguing from the strongest type of reasoning yeah. for knowledge or for existence, no. then what else can I provide? But I have a lot of intuitions, and they're bullshit. No, I'm saying universal one. Okay. Like my claim, my claim is about a human universal intuitive knowledge, not ah, just about. Okay. I was talking That's about that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so because this is what we argue from from first principles, things that are universal, like our own existence or causality. Trust me, it's a very strong. I personally believe because yeah. people are using different arguments. I personally believe this is the strongest argument for God's existence. The idea that already it is it is a case that is that it makes itself. It's made by itself. The Quran says. The existence of Allah is as true as you speaking. Or this religion or the Quran is as true as me and you speaking. It's an it's a observable fact. It's something that, that is self-evident. That does not require argumentation to begin with. So, so there must be an intuition to be atheist as well though, right? Because otherwise why would we... No, uh, no, I don't think everyone, anyone is 100% atheist. Uh -huh. Everyone deeply. That's why when a, when a plane is crashing, they, they scream God, when there is a... You know, that comes out. That comes out in these situations. I believe that any belief is within every human being, and I wish you had evidences for it. But that comes out because it can be clouded by the society. Why is atheism spread recently? Because of the atheist, the new atheist movement, that put the ideas intellectually clouded this position that was there. If you go back a few years, as I said to you, you find very rarely any atheists in the society. Do you get the point? Why? Because there was no one trying to cloud that position, which is innate. If you go to the parts which I have been. Uh, the the uh, farms or the part, parts that are away from city and so forth. I hardly met anyone that doesn't believe in a creator. And if they don't, it's an emotional argument. X happened in my life or to my parents or my friend or etc. Therefore, I don't believe in God. But X happening to you doesn't is not an argument against God's existence. So it becomes it becomes an emotional thing. Yeah. If you assume it's perfect, like that. perfect according to whose definition of perfection? Okay, but you have to have some. I mean, you're saying you know, you know, I was just saying to you, I was just saying to you the, that it is perfect for its right. intent. You get the point. We are here to be tested. If we yes. are here to be tested, yes. you have to have the choice to do right and wrong. Correct? If there's a test, you have to have two choices. Okay. Right, right and wrong. Right. So there will be people who do wrong, yeah. and they have to do that wrong in order for them to be accountable on the day of judgment for that test. You understand? So you saying there is bad, therefore there is no God is just. It's absurd, I would personally say. Why? Because a part, a bad is a part of human's existence. Yeah. Is that which makes you understand what good is as well? Because it's opposite. Right. It would allow you to understand what good is. If everything was only good, you will not understand the concept of good. If everything was always, always bad, you will not understand what bad is. So this harmony is what allows you to explain. So, uh, okay, I have a question. Go ahead. And, and now more about uh, the different religions, right? If you look at how the different no religions. Uh, I have, yeah. Came about mm -hmm. and. So, so like, so like we talk about religion, if you want, no problem. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, so, so like, um, Africa is basically split between Muslims and Christians mm -hmm. and some other religions as well. Are more, but um, mm -hmm. but most of the people there are Muslims and second most Christians and uh, something else. And it just depends on who colonized. The I don't know the exact stats, but yeah. But no, because Africa, Islam, you know, so like North Africa yeah. is predominantly Muslim. Right. But South Africa, I wouldn't say it's predominantly Muslim. Not Nigeria, for example, yeah, is Muslim, yeah, yeah. it's the biggest country. Right? There is, there is Muslims. No, no, no. Indonesia, I believe, or Malaysia, no, one of in, one of the biggest. I mean, in Africa. Oh yeah. The biggest African country, Nigeria. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm not sure about the stats. That's it could be. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or like, or like, so like. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Or like. We're in, talking in about in different Europe, religions. Yeah. If you look, why I was growing up Christian. And you were growing up Muslim. I was I growing know, up. Maybe you converted. Okay. No problem. Yeah. No, I, I'm not going to say because it's personal information. Maybe after later on I will let you know. But I was not born. I was born in Europe, by the way. 
sure. But yes. uh, so I, when I was a child, I, yeah. I was in Europe. Fine, fine, fine. But I can mm. be. No, no. But I, I'm really trying to say I was not growing up in that society, a believing society, because sure, because sure. you were talking about this point. But society, family, culture. What happened? Sure. What happened? Sure. Um, so so we have this disposition to believe in the higher power, mm. and then, who? What a coincidence. <laughs> People growing up in Muslim families become Muslims. Oh, what a coincidence. People who colonize uh, other countries and enforce Christianity on them become Christian. Ooh, what a surprise. And like... But I wouldn't say it's a surprise. I wouldn't, it's not a surprise. I don't think, I don't think anyone says it's a surprise. But, uh, but have you looked at the conversion rates uh -huh. and studies behind conversion rates? Uh -huh. Why is no. the first religion or conversion rates spreading? Probably Muslim. Why? Because if they are the best. Because it's the truth. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> well, it's the truth, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is the truth. Why? Because, because the truth when people investigate, they become Muslim, right? Yeah. Uh, according to Pew Research Institute, Muslim, yeah. Islam is the biggest growing religion, not conversion rate, not birth rate. Yeah. So I can show you that I have the stats here if you want to see as well. So you want to see? Sure. Yeah. So what we're saying is, letting aside this point, is that, that was that your point about? Because this is a point about religion. So you're trying to say yeah. that you're gonna follow what you're born with, or what you, what are you try? What is the argument you're trying yeah, to make? Yeah, that is that is one point. Okay. So, so the yeah. point opposite to it is the study, which is, will be will be enough as as, as a refutation of the idea. Not I would really. say. Why? Because if, if if millions of people have left their, their faith. I mean, some people are come. Are, were you Christian uh, when you were born? Yeah. So you are self-evident against your theory because you left Christianity. Right. So people are not following what they're born with. Right. When they grow old, they can easily, and it happens quite often. It will show over 60 million people actually leaving, uh, over 60 million people leaving uh, Christianity. 66 million people. Sorry? Let me get, let me get the, the, the study. Okay, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, changes religious uh, due to religious switching mm. okay now if you look here muslims yeah first okay. you look here christians minus leaving religion 66 million people yeah yeah now i mean unaffiliated is the most unaffiliated are the people who are becoming that this is not a religion unaffiliated the people who, who did not say i'm following a religion or not okay. so when they were when they were questioned yeah, yeah. They didn't uh, say their religion. They're unaffiliated. They didn't say their a specific right, religion that they're following. Pastor. Yeah, I'm so saying I'm saying people the people people who don't identify with a religion. They were converted to not being. Or like they were, I mean, they, they, they don't identify. Then, they don't identify. Yeah, but, but before they did, now they don't. Not necessarily. They could, they, could be, be the they could be. They could be. They could be. No, this is a study. Yeah. The results of the study. So yeah. the people that they questioned. This is the results that they're saying. Do you get the point? So this amount of people said that we are unaffiliated. This yeah. amount of people were became Muslim. Yeah. This amount of people left Christianity. Yeah, yeah. Coming back to the religions now, because this is not a point for religion, the unaffiliated one, yeah? Well, the, yeah, okay. So what is it for? Is Un, it uh, also unaffiliated, but, oh, but it's, yeah. it supports, it's, it's opposite to your point. Your point is that you stick with what you are. If you no, become that's unaffiliated... Not my, that's not my point. Like, for example, the reason So why, why is your point? So the reason that's why I was saying you're following a religion, you're born with it, you said to me, yes. Right, right. I'll, so, I'll, but, I'll but this is evidence that, 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 is, that this is not the case. The unaffiliated is also evidence that it's not the case. But so it's not supporting the, what you're saying. Now, the reason why people change to religion, why they're converted to No, religion. now you're going to have to support that, that whatever you're going to say now, because you're going to make a claim. Why do they do it? You, you're about to make the claim, why they do it, you will have to provide evidence. So far, I'm providing evidence from my side. Why do they do it? Tell me. Okay, so it is a. See, how are you? You're making me laugh. Oh, no, it's okay, yeah. So, so, so. Why do they, okay. they, they decide to switch? So, for example, look at look at the people here in Speaker's Court. They're Christian converters, they're Muslim converters. They're Muslim, or like. I don't know, I didn't see converters. Christian. I didn't see Christian converters, but yeah. They're here. Converts. I didn't see no, them. No, 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 people try to convert. Oh, you're saying people are propagating their faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pro propagating Islam, pro yes. propagating Christianity. Yes, yes. And look at the people propagating Christianity. Look at the people. People propagating, propagating atheism are here. People going at it. But, but, but look at. The, I mean, the difference yes. here. The people who are propagating Christianity are considered by society. I would say crazy people here. Crazy <laughs> old people. And I'm not saying this. Yeah. I'm not and, saying this. And, uh, and, and, yeah. and most of the Muslims who are converting here are young. They are very well spoken. Like you. Okay. Really thank you like, very much. I'm not well spoken. But thank you. <laughs> yes. They're, 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 they're but it shows something, reason. isn't it? What do you think it shows? It doesn't show that. Um, what do you think it shows? Okay. 
So if you look at the UK, for example, yes. and you look at uh, Christian families, you look at Muslim families, I'm making a statement, correct me if I'm wrong, I would say or, um, that Muslim families are usually more devout than Christian families in the UK on average. Do you agree? In, in, all over the world. All over the world. Yes. Okay. They're more practicing. To the religion, they're more devout. If you mean by right, devout, right, practicing, right. They, they take their faith, right, faith right, seriously, right. etc. Yes. They're more concerned about promoting it. Do no, agree? but but you're missing the, the key point. Right. Why are they practicing? If well, they were not, a if, thing? if uh, no, absolutely not. Culture, I would say, is one of the main reasons why people are could be leaving Islam today. No, but, but I mean, Do you know? I'm telling yeah. you from my experience. Okay. I meet people every day. Why the parents force? the faith some yeah. parents obviously yeah. this is the majority don't do this uh, right, right, right. as much as i know right, right, right. but the parents who do force it on their on their children the, the children tend to leave why there is no logical justification just shoving something down your throat when you become bigger and older you you move away from that specific thing but i mean the reason why people are christians why people are muslims here are not because of what we're talking about here not these rational arguments no 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 no. The no 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 it is one of the main reasons is that of course the, these, uh, these I'll, logical arguments uh, uh, me I'm going to talk about myself, yeah? I have a specific, I have a charity, it's called The Straight Path. I have a channel as well, it's called The Muslim Lantern, yeah? But um, in my charity, uh, we do this on a street level. So we engage with people in discussions, right? right, right. We have minimum one person accepting Islam a day. Sorry? We have minimum one individual accepting Islam a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minimum. Oh. From discussions. Because it makes sense. It is uh, with the innate belief that I told you already. So when you come, you want to convince me that God is a man who became uh, stripped naked on a cross, was killed, uh, who's a baby, and this. This is not going to enter your, your rationality or your heart. But when I come talk to you about the Islamic principle, there is a higher entity created, the world, self-sufficient, eternal. And when I provide you the evidences for Islam being true, which I have not even yeah. done in this conversation, yeah. then they become compelling for the individuals. Yeah. And the individuals tend to accept the religion okay. from that point of view. So, so you are... Okay, so the study shows that more people are converting to Islam than they As are a religion, the most. Jihad. No, it's the biggest growing religion yeah, yeah, in the world. Okay. Yes, oh, it's important for me, that's why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but you, you're not showing yet that this is because Islam just makes so much more sense. But it could be. Because, but, uh, so for example, like, but that's self-evident if you read it. If, it is not if I don't know, I mean, if you read, if you read, if you read the Quran and investigate Islam, oh, yeah. I would yeah, say it is. It is no, no. Best. But do you know anything about Islam? Yeah, a bit. What What is to you so far that you heard that is not rational? Give me one thing. That there's a creator. We already had discussed that. Come on, <laughs> maybe uh, already, I already give logical <laughs> cases for that. Yeah, Come that, on, my bro. I have to be fair. Creates you, so you obey him. Like what kind of reason is no, that? No, we don't. We don't just say Allah created. That's what someone said the other day. I don't know. Uh, no, but okay, sure. So we say as Muslims, Allah creates us in this world for two main purposes. Yeah. One that we learn. One that we learn. We learn about our Creator. We learn about the world around us, right? When Allah created Adam, the fr one of the first thing He did is that He taught him. He taught him, and then He compared him to the angels. That the angels did not know the knowledge that they that He had. Okay, so the first thing is about knowledge, about understanding. Allah says in the Quran, say my Lord increase me in knowledge. Okay. That's why the new scientific method used today comes from Muslims, the Hassan ibn al-Haytham. That's why the new, what? the new scientific method that has been developed today Which comes is? from a scientist, Muslim scientist in Andalusia called the Hassan ibn al-Haytham. He wrote a book called, sorry? What is the uh, study in the physical world through experimentation, repeatability and falsification. Okay. This scientific method that we're using today is developed by a Muslim. It's what new is knowledge to you, isn't it? New knowledge to you. <laughs> what, what is the point of that? It shows that Islam, <laughs> the, I was just saying that Islam teaches you to learn. Because one Muslim is creating this scientific... No, 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 I was, I was going through different people now. I was saying okay. Islam teaches you to learn. So I'm trying to say one of the purposes of Islam, and I'm giving examples for these people manifesting that purpose of Islam. But I'm not saying I'm not saying it proves anything. I'm just saying it. Okay. <laughs> it shows that Islam is helping these people to do these things. Not really. Why? Islam teaching you to do it. Huh? Islam teaching you to gain knowledge about the world. Okay, this teaching you. Sorry? What is the question? So why is not is that not a purpose for these Muslim scientists to do what they what they were doing? Because there are as much as many atheist scientists, henceforth there are a lot of atheist reasons. But I'm not talking about atheism. So far I'm talking about, about uh, Islam. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying Islam yeah, yeah. tells you to do X okay. and Muslims are doing X. Right. I'm saying there's a correlation. Okay. 
but okay. Do you agree there's a correlation or no? Can I show you some? Okay, yes, go ahead. Yes, but no correlation. So you see, these are two people, okay? Okay, sure. Muslim. I know that correlation does not entail co co uh, causation. Fine, fine. Yes. Muslim, no Muslim. This person does X, this mm -hmm. person does X. Both do X. If you say here, the reason why this does X is, is the Quran, how do you explain that this person is doing X? Henceforth, they No, they I'm, not, I'm, not the, saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, but that was not the claim I'm making. Okay. I was saying it's one of the reasons. So I was saying this is one but of the things. But you don't show this by him doing something. Sorry? You, you, but you don't show this by him doing something. No, no, so me okay. giving examples was just to show how much uh, Muslims impacted the world as a religion okay. and if the religion does that then the religion plays a part in that influence that's the point i was making okay. that's that's very basic yani, would you agree with me i don't know so the religion did not play any part in the all of the muslim scientists that came i mean come no, on now no, you know you're not being fair it, it can of course i mean if people are muslims and that's no identity. does it rationally do by the way many of these scientists said that talked about islam uh, as their as their motives for doing okay, it good for them okay do no but it shows no, but you're saying good for them. This is the argument I'm making, you know, <laughs> that Islam does help them. You say no, but well, then okay. yeah, we say good for them. Okay, right? okay. okay. It can so help, like, it is helping. Honestly, everything, reality. everything can help you to gain knowledge. Islam is one of them. No, I but agree. but not no. Actually, if you, I'll, look, if Christianity opposes science and did oppose science throughout history, there was a clash between many people left Christianity because of science. Reading Genesis and the history, the the historical record, comparing it with science, was one of the main reasons why so many people left Christianity. I don't know so, about that. Okay, so so claiming that that's the point. By studying the religions, you'll understand the point I'm making. Okay, so Christians are more anti-scientists than Muslims. No, I'm so, not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying the scripture. I'm not talking about people. Uh -huh. I'm saying the religious scripture, the religion itself, yeah, yeah. will lead you to have an internal contradiction, because you will have to 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 gather the discoveries that we have and what we're learning and to combine it with the opposite knowledge in the scripture. So scripture says no and what we're learning says yes. And you will have to combine the internal contradictions in your, in your mind which allows many people to leave the faith. But I'm saying in Islam it is not the, the same. You get the point I'm trying to make? And it will be the same for other religions. If you read the Hindu scriptures saying that the sun has seven horses pulling it, saying that the earth is on, on two horns of a bull holding it, etc. These things when you read in your scriptures the best you could do, oh, it's metaphorical, it doesn't mean what it is. Okay, so what's the point of God giving that metaphor then? Okay, okay. You get the point? So when you read the Quran, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will see that the Quran is in line with what we're observing, with like what we're seeing. Like evolution theory, for example. Now, let's come to that. Because you have to demonstrate that evolution theory is true yeah. before making the claim whether okay. Islam agrees with it or not. Because if evolution okay. theory is not true, then Islam would not agree with it because it's not true. Fair. So can you demonstrate that evolution theory is, is, is a reality that took place in history? I'm a philosopher. Okay, why are you telling me about that? <laughs> okay. because, because I know, I know what you're saying. I know. Who, who do you I'm, 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 from my investigation, okay. I'm saying it is not. From my not investigation, true. we say specifically with the human being, yeah. we say the human being have, has not evolved in a, in a cycle. I personally believe majority of it is nonsense, right? Okay. From my research, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying this as someone who is Muslim, therefore I say that, therefore, no. I've seen them manipulating things to support the theory of evolution. And there is many things, like example, the drawings of Haeckel, where there is a baby and there is, there is a, a common disease called lipoma, right? Where you have a part of your skin exit coming from a place from your body. There's a part of skin coming from the back, so he said he has a tail and he's a part in the evolution. Haeckel used the drawings and claimed that that baby is a, is a, was a, in, in the evolutionary kind of uh, process. Just because it has extra skin, and this is a disease called lipoma, right? You have uh, the, wave, the whale's pelvis. If you read a book called uh, Biology by Ravens and Johnson, it's published 2018. It's a recent book. And it's claiming that the whale's uh, pelvis, right, are, are vestigial organs. Vestigial organs means that they are left over from a previous ancestor evolutionary, from an evolutionary perspective. And there is another paper published in Science and Nature magazine, recent, saying that these pelvis are not vestigial, they're not purposeless, they're used to help uh, uh, the whales mate together. So they're not purposeless leftover vestigial organs from a previous ancestor. And I can go on and give so many examples for this case, do you get the point? And uh, I'm, I'm happy to provide evidences. Point I'm trying to make is that the research will show that these people are twisting things which are very basic. Like for example, a human and a chimpanzee are 99% uh, identical. Another study, 80%. Another study, 70%. Do you know why? Because of the method that they used in the study. Sure. Speaking very specific genetics, yeah. not every genetic, and then claiming that it's 99%. Do 
they mean this specific group of genetics is 99%. So there is a lot of uh, uh, manipulation taking place yeah. in the Western world today, trying to push forward this idea. So I'm saying, coming back to what I'm saying, yeah, I'm okay. saying Islam will agree with the reality with that which is true. Like for example, Tolkien, the Quran, yeah. talking about 1,400 years ago, the expansion of the universe. This is something you can observe today, yeah. right? So it's talking, uh, it's talking about that Allah created the universal power and we are expanding it. It's 1,400 years ago. And uh, the Hubble telescope, Hubble, who, who discovered this, he got Nobel Prize. And where's the Nobel Prize for us 1,400 years ago? This was in the late 1900s. The Quran talks about biological life. That everything is created from water. Every living thing is from water specifically, right? Chapter 21 of the Quran, verse 30. The Quran talks about mountains, how they have deep roots within the earth, the process of isostasy, how they stabilize the earth. How oh, they have what deep roots in the earth? Deep roots and they, deep roots and they help stabilize the earth. So the Quran described them as pigs, is where you know the tent when you put a pig yeah, on the floor. Yeah. So the biggest part is down, the small part is up, yeah, yeah. and they stabilize the tent. Wow. This is exactly mountains. Yeah, but I mean, that's not a very spectacular claim, is it? So uh, who made that claim before Islam that mountains do, the, do this know, specific do thing? No, but now, for, in order for you to say it's not a spectacular claim, and we're just okay, okay. we just discovered it with the X-ray vision, seeing tectonic plates colliding with one another, which allows the mountain to have a big part That's up. That's not what the Quran says. Sorry? That's not what the Quran says. No, I'm saying the Quran is giving, the Quran, tectonic plates is a new term that we're using today. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. There was no X-ray vision in the past. Right. The point I'm trying to make is that yeah. the Quran is making a claim, and our studies and knowledge is confirming that claim. If the Quran is just someone guessing something, it's not from the creator who created the universe, it will end up with so many things which are contradictory with the reality, like the scriptures I mentioned. Like human being is uh, embryology, cheese coming from cheese in the biblical scripture, or what I mentioned about the horses in the uh, Hindu scripture. Do you get the point? So I'm saying similarly, 1,400 years ago, if this book was just coming from the man, Prophet Muhammad and it was his knowledge, then it will have so many superstitious beliefs. If you look at the Arabs, what they used to be, it will have so many problems. And then me and every Muslim today will have to reconcile this contradiction. Do you get the point I'm trying to say? And will allow so many people to leave the faith. Will make so many people leave the faith. Let's go through the claims. What claims? The scientific claims that prove true. Sure. I'm, I'm not saying it, it is a scientific claim. I'm saying now the Quran talks about the physical reality. Yeah. Things that we learn about the physicality, yeah. we know it's true. The Quran is, conf is confirming it. Yeah. I mentioned to you a few of them already. Uh, for example, the Quran talks about embryology, okay, what uh, going a stage by stage in the, in the embryological, embryological process. Professor Keith Moore, who's an embryologist, you can Google him or research him. He, he, I think he died already now. He said that he was a Christian, he's not a Muslim. He said that Prophet, and he didn't become Muslim, he died as a Christian, but he said the Quranic description of embryology has to come from a creator. Why? Because he studied it with a microscope and he realized how embryology takes place takes place in reality. So for example, the Quran describes embryology at a certain point to be a leash. A leash, a leash like, a leash like, leash. Do you know a leash? Sorry? A leech. Do you know a leech? Ah, the Small insect. The fruit. Oh, no. Insect. No, no, not the fruit. The insect that, that sucks blood, that is very sticky and sucks blood. Do you know it? Maybe. Looks like a worm. Okay, no problem. Sucks your blood. You know when you go, when people go in the river and there is things on their body sucking, sucking their blood? Okay, okay, this okay. is called the leech, right? Know, yeah. yeah, so the leech, uh, the embryo looks like a leech, exactly, yeah. behaves like a leech. So the leech, the insect hangs and the embryo is hanging. The embryo is sucking blood and the leech sucks blood. So the Quran gives one word as a description to describe how the embryo exactly functions in that stage. How it looks and how it functions. Okay, so it sucks blood? And what is the other one? It hangs, it hangs. sucks blood, yeah. and it looks in physical substance. The embryo looks like a leech in that stage. So the Quran gives you the stages one by one. And then, and as I said, Google uh, Professor Keith Moore and see what he said about it, right? He's someone who is specific in that field, who studied that field, okay? Now, there are many, many other claims, but this is not the only evidence. It's just one of the evidences why we say Islam is the truth. Right. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Why, like in the, in the Quran, why are there only so, I mean, you would say there are so many yeah. truths, but you can also ask why there are so few, right? Like, why is it not a... Uh, well, you haven't read the Quran. Huh? You haven't read the Quran. <laughs> oh, you're saying why there is no more. Why, why there isn't more, basically, you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. why yes. there is not more. So? Because the Quran is not only a scripture to give us facts. The Quran is not coming to give us facts. Right. The Quran is composed of verses. These verses are called in the Arabic ayah. Uh -huh. Ayah means sign. 
which means every verse within itself will be a sign. So the Quran talks about, no, it doesn't only talk about this kind of scientific things. It talks about uh, it's sent as guidance for mankind. It talks about laws for society. It talks about stories from the past to teach you morals that you can learn from, right? It talks about uh, the relationship between the father and the son. It talks about prophethood. It talks about the afterlife. It talks about what's going to happen to you when you're dying, after you die. So the Quran is not sent as a scientific book to give you some scientific information right. or biological information or, right. or, or cosmological information. But these things are extra within the Quran to show its miraculous nature. Okay, so you get the point? They're just kind of like to, to prove, the, like to, to show, show off, repeat. Or it's like one, it, is to... it is a sign for you. Right, a sign. It is a sign for you. Right. Every verse is a sign for you. Right. So you can understand that this is just not a claim that this is from a creator, right. but there are things that are showing that it is from a creator. But as I said, this is not the only thing that proves Islam is true, and I will provide you more if you like. So for example, the Prophet Muhammad, 1,400 years ago, he spoke about the future. Okay, what does he say? Excellent. Now, now he's, he lived 1,400 years before, and he's talking about today, 1,400 years later. Does yeah. What does he say? I'm, I'm going to tell you now. Are you excited no, now? Yeah? No, okay, no. I'm going to tell you. Yeah? Prophet Muhammad said you will see the barefoot Bedouin Arabs. The what? You know the Arabs? The Arabs? Arabs. Like no, me, I'm an Arab. Yeah, you know, Arabs <laughs> like us, yeah? So the Arabs you used to live in the deserts, right. Bedouins. Bedouins mean people who live in tents, they don't have civilization, they don't have buildings and this and that. They just live in a tent and they milk their camel and that's it. You get the point? So Prophet Muhammad said, you will see these barefoot Bedouin Arabs around you. Barefoot, naked Bedouin Arabs, they will be competing in building the tallest buildings. Where is the tallest building in the world today? Dubai? Dubai, Burj Khalifa. Do you know 50 years ago? No, no, I'm not saying that. I didn't make that claim. Why are you jumping to that claim? Yeah. All of what I said, and you just hanged on to that. If step Europe by step. A bigger power a step, than this a, group. A step. No, no, the Prophet will say they will be doing that in the end of time. So uh -huh. we believe so this is a sign. So this is, we believe this is a sign that the end of time is near. Yeah, right? Because, so, yeah. so uh, because the claim is not done. Prophet Muhammad okay. said they will be competing in building tall buildings. Oh, okay, okay. Saudi Arabia is competing with them. Yeah, Kuwait yeah. is competing yeah. with them. But I want to say about Dubai. Yeah, yeah. 50 years ago, it was a desert. Uh -huh. Do you know that? 50 uh, years ago. Dubai, okay. Yeah, 5 0. Just 50 uh, years ago, it was a desert. Yeah. What happened? Why did it change? They found oil. Prophet Muhammad said 1,400 years ago that the earth will be used as treasures. But he didn't only say that. He said that money will become abundant within the Arabs. Okay. So he didn't only say what they will be doing, yeah. but he also talked about the resources in which they will be able to get or be able to build these tall buildings. That's one claim. Let's go more. Let's go further. Prophet Muhammad said, yeah, there's many more. There's yeah, many I want more. to talk about them. You want to talk? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, okay. So yes. let's talk about them one by one. So, tall By buildings. what? By what? Oh, the, yeah, the predictions. Yes, yes. Like... No, the Prophet, the Prophet yeah, Muhammad said. Be competing. No, 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 no. You have to be careful. Look, because okay, I, okay. I think you're not looking them fairly. Prophet okay. Muhammad lived 1,400 years ago. Yeah. How, what was the state of the Arabs in his life? Um, this is the point. If you study how the Arabs lived, okay, well, they, you will understand why it's a magnificent claim to make that claim. Uh, the Arabs used to be bu built buildings in the floor. They had no civilization. Mm. They had no uh, military weapons. There was the Roman and Persian Empire, the Byzantine and the Sassanian Empire. These, these were the biggest empires in the world. You have the Chinese Empire, etc. Arabs were nothing. They had nothing at that time. They were very. They had very superstitious, stupid beliefs about the world, right? They were not people of buildings or civilization. Prophet Muhammad could have said or would have said if he was just guessing, the Romans and the Persians are going to do it, the Chinese are going to do it, X and Z are going to do it. But he was making a point. You see, you see them, the naked, uh, barefoot Arabs, they don't have civilization. You look at them, these same people that you see will be able to do X, Y, and Z. You will be able to build the tallest building in the, in the world, right? But as I said, he didn't only say that. He said the resources. You know, oil is not of value until today. Today we're using oil and technology, but in the past it was not the way it is today. It's called the black gold today, right? This is the reason these countries are rich. So when Prophet Muhammad said that the money will become abundant within you. So he explained that this will be something that will happen in the future. So this will be a means as well for you to be building these buildings. But who is rich in the Arab countries? Like I mean, like Qatar, who? Saudi yeah, Arabia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These countries are building the buildings. Are right, the rich right, countries? Right, right, right. But I mean, you're saying like in. But he was talking about the Arabs. In the Arab world, money becomes abundant. Sorry. That is true for an elite, but it's not true for the masses. Sorry. Is it true for the masses as well that money is abundant? No, money is abundant within within the the country within the civilization, but it's being ripped off by the government. Uh -huh. So the money. Do you know Egypt have, have Do you know how many? like resources are in Egypt alone. Ten. I get it. 
no, no, no. You'd be shocked. You know, uh, you know, Qanat uh, Suez, the Suez Nile, or whatever they call yeah, it. In, yeah. This by itself is enough to have billions of revenue. The, the pyramids right. is enough to bring billions in revenue, right? They have natural gas in the sea, right? They have two seas. They have uh, the, the Mediterranean Sea. They have the Red Sea. I can go on and go on. Do you know, uh, they, 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 they have the Nile going through the land. They can use it for vegetation. Egypt was the first country that produces cotton into the whole world because of the uh, Revel Nile. If you look at the Egyptian civilization, what did they have? They had the Nile and they were just uh, using the Nile and bringing vegetation, cotton, and that's what made the Egyptian civilization the, the, strong at that time, the, the pharaohs, right? So the resources are there, but unfortunately the governments are pleading the resources, taking them for themselves, the corrupt elites that you're talking about. That doesn't mean that money is not there, that money became abundant like the corrupt. That the people are not using the money. But coming back, okay. Combining all of this is just one claim I'm just starting with. Yeah, yeah. Prophet Muhammad made many other claims that are specific about reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is this. Without me going through all of these claims, my point is this. Yeah. After looking at all of this, are you saying to me, or do you think that Prophet Muhammad, who's illiterate, who couldn't read or write, who lived in that civilization at that time, had superstitious beliefs before Islam came to him or revelation came to him, right? Are you telling me that he accessed this knowledge that was not uh, present in his surroundings or in his so societies before him? Where did he get this information from? Um, how, how did he not make any false prophecies about the future well, or information about the physical reality? The conclusion would have to be that he didn't write it, right? Either, like, if, if he wrote it, then, and he, and he was illiterate. He, he, he recited it and his companions wrote it down. Okay, okay. And we have carbon dated manuscript of it. And so we have it from that time. Okay, so, okay, so he did that. Yes. He. How? Okay, so he. Tell me again. What did he okay. do? Okay. What is it to be proved? Prophet Muhammad brought a scripture. He, he what? He brought. He brought a scripture. Got revelation from the Creator. Yeah. God gave him revelation. Uh, so, so that we believe God is the word of God. Allah, re Allah recited the Quran or gave the Quran. Mm -hmm. Angel Gabriel took the Quran and he transmitted it to Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad transmitted it to the people. Okay, this was the process. Right. And we believe uh, with other prophets as well. Angel Gabriel came to give them revelation. Prophet Muhammad is one, the last and final messenger that had revelation. Right. Okay, I'm saying that scripture that came makes many claims. One of them, for example, that if this scripture was not from God, it will have contradictions because God is perfect, therefore cannot make a contradiction. So, I, I, I write philosophy papers without contradiction. I'm not God. No, I'm not saying you are, okay. but I'm saying it's a condition that the scripture does not have contradictions Necessary if we claim it's from God. Do you agree with me? Necessary? Yeah. Okay. So how can it be from God and has a contradiction in it? Can be. Okay. So we're saying that's one of the things that the, every scripture that claims is from God has to present. You agree? So if the Quran had contradictions, isn't isn't the evidence that it's not from God? Honestly, what? Uh, you don't think a contradiction is evidence that the Quran is not from God? Sorry. Uh, if the Quran had contradictions. No, I don't think so. It's, it, it would be so proof it, that it's not true. So how can a creator make contradictions? Why not? I can make contradictions. Why so not the creator? The cr like there is nothing in the in the existence that we see is contradiction. That's why we have the law of non-contradiction. Yeah, I mean, that's contradiction. Do you agree that the that there is something called the law of non-contradiction? Sorry. Do you agree that there is something called the law of non-contradiction? Um, ex explain. You cannot be a married bachelor. You cannot exist and not exist at the same time. Okay. You cannot be here and. and you get the point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you agree that this is a reality? It's something that we need to use in order for us to reason. You cannot reason without the, yes. the law of non-contradiction. Okay, yes. so the, the reality is showing us that there is no contradictions in the reality. And if the Creator created the reality and there is no contradictions in, within the reality... Wait, wait, wait. The reality you, is, <laughs> don't worry about this. You yeah, know? Okay, okay. The yeah. reality is showing us what? That there is no contradiction. When we see the reality, we don't see the contradictions within the reality. Okay. It shows that the Creator is wise, created the crea creation without contradictions. But I mean, so if revelation yeah. comes from Him... Do you see modus ponens there? Or any other logical law, do you see them there? But how is that related to contradiction? Well, do you see contradiction? Con uh, it just seems like... You know contradiction what contradiction is? is? Yeah, but contradiction is like... Hmm. It is not really something that is applicable to reality. It is applicable. It is applicable to reason. No, it is applicable. Okay. That in, 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 a, in a scenario, you have a tree and you don't have a tree in the same time. That would be a contradiction. But for yeah. us, this doesn't exist. Does which is be, yeah. Which is evidence that there is no contradictions. I mean... In or, or we see a married bachelor but uh, walking I mean, in the street. Okay, okay. So let's talk about existence. Or a, or, a, or a squared circle. But but existence itself, so basically like for there to be a contradiction within existence. But, but I think, I think, I think sometimes, sometimes, sometimes what happens in these conversations 
is we might stick on points that are not important. Fair. And you agree with me, this is not an important point because it's not the argument that we're making. Yeah. I mean, I'm you saying are the Quran. The, the argument. You are making the argument that contradiction is a very important. No, I'm making the claim that if a scripture has a contradiction, it is not from God. That's the claim I'm making. You can agree or disagree on that. Okay. I would agree, majority. I don't think you may be the first person to tell me no. That everyone I spoke I to know. agreed with that with that point because okay. we as human beings know that if we claim the Creator is perfect, you cannot make a mistake, and a contradiction is a mistake. Yes. Okay. Yes. So how is the Creator perfect and making mistakes? So I mean, if you claim, if your religion claims that God is perfect, yeah. cannot have mistakes, <laughs> cannot have discrepancies. Like the Creator yeah. cannot create the, the world and then the world is opposite to what the Creator is telling us it is. So these contradictions are evidence yeah. that they're not from God if that Creator is perfect. But I think, so I don't believe Do you see what I'm trying to say? No, no, I'm saying the religions that yeah, make the claim. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Yes. But I, I would say if, if there was a Creator, then obviously he made a lot of mistakes. And you're justifying all these mistakes. Which mistake? Well, I mean, poverty. All, all poverty is the creator's mistake. How did you? How did you? How did you, you arrive? No, no, no. How yeah. did you arrive? Now you make the argument. Tell me how. Okay, how okay. is poverty creator's so mistake? So if, if I'm a state, if if I if I'm a country and I'm a perfect country, I have so much control, so much power. Okay, good. Yes. I wouldn't create poverty. So it seems but, to be a but a country is not an, an entity that can create or not create. You mean the people? What do you mean by country? Country oh, is a leader, country is not a, leader, a rational a entity. A leader, a leader. A leader. Let's yeah. use a leader. Okay. okay. A leader has so many resources and yeah, and he creates poverty. Did he make a mistake? Why he if he has greed, huh? he doesn't create poverty. He can take. Do you as a human being do you have greed? Greed. Yeah, I mean, greed wanting everything for yourself. That's yeah, what right. I mean. Okay, so it's very common that that person can take the money for himself because of his greed. Hmm. Why not? How is that on the creator? How is the result of us having, how did you put that problem on the creator when it's the individual problem that kept the resources for himself? You mean of the leader? Yes. Uh -huh. the like for example, Islam, like for example, Islam yes. has the cat. It's one of the five, like one of the five pillars of Islam. Focus yes. with me because sometimes there's right. distractions. Right. It's five pillars of Islam. One of them is zakat. Zakat is a two, two and a half percent of your wealth that you have to give. Okay. If you are a rich person to the poor. Right. Two and a half. It's obligatory. One or three and a half? This is a, a yearly, no, this is a guidance that comes from the Creator. We're right. not the ones who specify the amount the Creator does. He's right. all wise, all knowing. I'm just saying for it's us, arbitrary. Sorry? I'm just saying it's no, 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 I'm making a separate point. Okay. I'm saying if that law is applied within reality, there will, not, there will be no poverty. And the Creator commanded us to apply that law, but we're not applying that law, so we cannot blame the Creator for poverty's existence. The Creator commands you to be charitable. This is the obligatory charity, but the Creator commands you to give money as well. And Muslims are the most charitable people, community in the UK, according to the Daily Mail. So we are charitable because we follow a scripture. So we help remove this idea of poverty. The Creator is removing poverty, is not putting poverty. So I cannot blame the Creator for poverty when it is an individual human mistake. Okay, so you're saying the Creator is putting this world where people can be poor, he, he does that, right? In the the world creator, the creator, I, I said to you, the creator created this world as a test, correct? Right. So you need to have two options that you pick from. Yes. To do good or to do evil. Right. To follow your greed and, uh, uh, or to be good and helpful to other individuals. Okay, okay. So there are people who will choose this and there are people right, who will choose right, this. Right, right, there, right. Are, there were societies in Islamic history, the prophets uh, community, the first caliphate community, the second caliphate, the third caliphate, the fourth caliphate, historically, were communities that we're applying the Islamic systems. The time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, which was a caliphate in Islam, they, they, you would come to the poor person, give him money, and he will say to you, you're too late, I already have enough money. Can you imagine a society like this? It was throughout history, it happened. Really? Historically, the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, go and buy uh, food and throw it on the mountains. I don't want to say the birds became hungry at the, at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Not the human beings, the birds. He used to put the food for them. Why? Because the Islamic system was implemented correctly. There was no poverty. People were given charity. They were given their obligation. If I'm Bill Gates and I give two and a half percent every year, that's enough, man. I don't, you don't need anything else. Just bring uh, Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, two and a half percent every year, you're not going to have poverty in the world. This is a very basic principle that you can see, but can remove this idea of poverty. So you cannot blame the creator for individuals, people's actions. Okay. That's a very irrational thing. Okay, okay. So, but, but just, just to complete what I was saying. Sure. So, the creator creates the possibility for poverty, right? Yes. Okay. And then I will need to go pray soon, but we will listen. Okay. Okay. Soon, soon. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, okay. I have time. Okay. Yeah. And then he creates uh, 
man as a, uh, as a uh, they live as a test and they can choose evil or bad so they can choose to give to others mm. so to choose poverty or to choose um, affluence for other people yes right? helping other people but now the poor people are so many the rich people are so few so what he's actually doing is he is giving this possibility to end poverty only to a few right not to humanity as such or not no. to like the people but he's giving it to a few why is no, that no that's not true okay tell me how did that person arise to power uh, i mean we're capitalists Sorry? We're capitalists. So it depends on how that person arises to power. Okay. You are placing the person arising to power to the creator. But there's a lot of human influence into how an individual also become, become in power. Sure. Yeah. And it's not only the leader as an individual that, that holds the power and the wealth. You use the word the elites and this can be applied very vast on the society. Right. The, the people who are rich, they can be many judges, many police officers, many people in the army. many. Why? They take bribes and they take X and they take Z. Right, right. Right. So it's not one individual, it's so many people okay. that influence this idea of poverty. So the poor people themselves are kind of causing their own poverty. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I'm saying the elites. I'm saying that I'm saying the elites are. I'm saying the I'm saying I'm saying the elites are. The elites. And the elites is not only the leader, I'm saying. I'm saying there are so many people who do other than the poor people. How many percent? Depending on where you're talking, depending on you're talking, but like where you're talking. Isn't that weird that the creator is giving that power to the creator like is this? not given, those people are choosing to do that. You are, you are, do you know, example you're making is like the creator is he had the hundred pounds and he gave it to you, and then to me, he said, I'm not gonna. Creator is not giving anything to anyone, the people here. We do believe the creator is the one who provides for us, okay. but we are the ones that make the choices. Okay. So no one misunderstands my statement or something. Yeah, so we are saying we are here making the choices. So we are the ones that influencing the idea of poverty or being rich, right? And people can co choose to, corrupt, uh, to be corrupt and take money and worldly gain, or they can be even good and still have money. There's many good people who, who, uh, who would help and charitable and donate, like the city the Muslim community. Muslim community is one of these people who are very charitable, who have wealth, but they're still given the wealth. Wow, yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. let's, let's just try to, to, to end this, right? Okay. Because I did provide, uh, I would say, a lot of uh, reasoning from my side. Yeah, yeah. Would you agree with me? And I, if the claims I made, I did provide evidence. Would you agree with me? Did any claims I make I didn't provide evidence for? Or did I provide evidences for the claims I made when you asked? Um, I don't know if everything followed from everything, but I, I don't know. What didn't follow from what? Uh, okay, uh, you forgot, then uh, I cannot do anything then. I think, uh, no, I'm saying the claims the, I made. The, the claims I made, did I provide evidences for? Uh, you, justifications, yes. No, evidences like... Evidence uh, like, it's true. No, no, evidence... Uh, no, I'm not talking about Islam. I'm saying evidences for the claims, for example, that Islam is the biggest growing religion. The claims that I was making, yeah. the research for the people being, ch children being born, all yes. of this stuff. When I was making individual claims or statements, yes. I was providing evidence for it. Do you agree? Some camera by the way, I don't know why. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, you don't yes, have to agree, okay? okay yeah. Fine, yeah. No, I'm just trying to say my position, what I did, right? Uh, yeah. And now it's the ball in your court, as they say. Do you get the point? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. So after providing this, uh, this is what I can do. And then guidance is from the Creator. Have you read the Quran? Uh, this might sound rude, but. No, it no, would no, not. It would not. It would not sound rude. I have the Quran. I have it on my toilet. Many people, many people. I have it on the toilet. Okay. I read one page whenever I'm on the toilet. This is very rude, I would say. Oh, is <laughs> it? oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you have a translation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in German or English? English yeah. Okay. So uh, you read the Quran then? Yeah. How often? Uh, yeah, every day, every time I'm on the toilet. So what do you think? It is interesting, but it is not so far. So far, I'm in the first five percent. I would say hmm. it is. Uh, it is like about okay laws and mes menstruation, and then Allah knows and does not forgive, but it also does forgive to others. Menstruation? Me menstruation, like women... Chapter 2, you're still in Chapter 2. I guess. Yeah. You are in Chapter 2. You're uh, uh, yeah, yeah. in the 200s, you're still in the, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the area. Okay, you're still in the beginning, very, 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 <laughs> very, very beginning. You know? yeah. It's okay, continue reading the Quran. Yeah, cool, cool. And do you have any questions for me? Because I, uh, we had a discussion. Do you have any questions? When you're here... Hmm. Yeah, so... And I, I really appreciate you giving me your time, you having this cordial yeah. discussion, and uh, yeah. it is it is appreciated, you know, because a lot of people are, as you said, some uh, religion, some religions come here to shout, you know. You right. spoke about them already, but right. I appreciate this cordial discussion, you know. Right. Yes. But, uh, so when you come here, your main purpose is to convince me. Yeah. 
No. Do you remember when you said to me, convince me God exists? What was my response? I said, I'm not here to convince. I said, I will, I will give you our perspective, but you, it's, it's but, but your why? choice. Uh, why Sorry? do you give them? Because like, I want good for time? you. Because you, so you want good for me, yeah. that's why you... Okay. I want good for you and for me. For you? For both of us. So you, when you're guided, you will go to paradise. And me, I'm my fulfilling my obligation as a Muslim by sharing the message of truth, because I want good for other people. Of Prophet said you should love for others what you love for yourself. So I'm trying to love for others what I love for myself. That's the reason I can, why I do this. But is there also something you're getting from my reason? Or is my reason Everything in the afterlife. For you to... Everything in the afterlife. Mm. So if I was not a believer, there's nothing waiting for me, basically. So everything I'm doing here, the reward will be in the afterlife. You get the point? So in here, this, this world, no, there's no money going in my pocket or anything like that. No, 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 but I'm, no, 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 I don't mean that. I, I don't know you don't mean that. I just, I just say it as a joke. I mean, like, from my reasoning. Is yes. that something you think about? Or is it something that you consider, okay, now... Don't you, think, do that it's a, don't you think that it's an innate thing for us to want good for others as we do for ourselves? Do I need a reason for that? Okay. Do I need a reason for it? To want good for others as I want for myself? No. Okay. <laughs> so if I want good for others, for people to become Muslims so they can go to, go to paradise and see they're not punished when they die. Because we believe in punishment after you die as well. So we believe in, in as there is reward for those who follow, there is punishment for those who don't follow. Because I'll tell you the truth. Me providing evidence and someone still say, oh, no, no, it's not even this and that, and ignoring it. Then he can only blame himself in the afterlife as well. Like Allah says in the Quran, we will show them our signs in the horizon and within themselves until it's clear to them that it's the truth. And Allah says that about some people, that they will be turned away from the signs. And if you show them every sign, they will not believe in it. And if you show them the path of goodness, they will not follow. And if you show them the path of evil, they will follow. So there are some people who will not care they will not follow and there has to be also a punishment for that because they're influencing the world in a specific manner too so they're not only denying their creator that give them everything that they have but in the same time they're influencing the world in a negative way so we are saying there's a combination here of inviting people and also giving warning to people and this is the job of the messengers to give warnings and to give glad tidings for those who believe will get the glad tidings and for those who don't believe will get a warning and i understand the reality that there will be believers and non-believers non that's why i said i'm not here to convince you because there was people who are 100 billion times better than me throughout history and they couldn't convince people so what makes you uh, what makes me the unique person that is going to convince every but individual if i'm convinced this will be good for me right it is will be good for you okay. so you want me to be convinced but you're not convincing it's not I want you to be convinced, but because convincing we believe is from Allah. So I, it, it has, it's, it's irrelated to what I want. I want good for you as a result after you become a Muslim. So I'm fulfilling my obligation by giving you the message. But guidance is from Allah alone. So Allah is the one who places the guidance or, you know, the words, they settle in the hearts only in Allah's hands. It's not in my hands. You get the point? So I can give you the words. They can either enter and exit from the other part or they can settle in the heart through Allah's permission if the person is sincere all the person has to do is to be sincere and sincerely ask guidance from the creator and he will get the guidance nothing else yeah. let's end on this note let's end on this note man it was nice talking to you i didn't ask you your name all this time toby i like your name bro yeah it's a nice name toby i'll tell you later why my name is muhammad when will you tell me sorry when will you tell me after we shut off we shut off the cameras you know that's it <laughs> It's a very long discussion. Uh, we're done, we're done. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants Toby, Toby is here. <laughs> but I think he's exhausted already. You, know? you can bring Toby for fun. You want to come? To eat? You know, we're, we're fasting in Ramadan, so we're going to break our fast, isn't it? I need to pray Asr, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to go pray quickly and come, yeah? You can pray over here because he's gone. Where do I pray? Um, what's his title for that? Who's the Muslim that guy? He's like Muslim. No, no, he's, a, he's Turkish. So he comes from a Muslim background. Yeah, Turkish. But he's not practicing. He's Islam. completely lost touch with Islam. Inshallah, we hope Allah gives him his head. What can I put? Hmm? What can I put? No one has the Quran. We haven't asked everyone yet. We, we no, he's gone. He's gone. Ah. See if somebody else here. Uh, but I, I got a really good app. <laughs>
You're so confused, man.